So I'll try to move quickly through the process for uh, optimizing doing remeshing for the spades. Again, it's going to be different for every model, every project. Um, in fact, if I have time, I'll try to bring up some of the rollers, uh, which uh, take a little bit more uh, doing to optimize. But So to start, I'm just going to load the uh, garden spade uh, tool. Let's draw it out and edit it. And you know, take a look at my total point count here, up around 60,000. The active uh, tool, which is the... Um, blade here is very high at 34,000. It's, it's probably the, the highest. Yeah, you know, this one's at seven, so it's not very uh, big and about 16 there. And yeah, I can definitely optimize all of these and still have them look pretty good uh, when we bring them into 3D Studio to animate and render them. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, here with the uh, blade. And uh, actually, I'm going to start by uh, copying, duplicating all of my subtools. So I'll duplicate that one, this one, and this one, and you'll see it adds a number. If it has a number on it, it's just going to increase it by one, or it's going to add a one uh, to these. So uh, the next thing I want to do is hide um, select this one, and then hide everything else and I can bring the eyeball back just by clicking down here uh, somewhere. So now I have my copy, uh, only my copy visible. So I can work on that a little easier. I'm going to turn off symmetry and I'm going to, if it's on, and then I'm going to come down to geometry and Z remesher and bring that up. And it's default settings here. Uh, sometime, most of the time that's going to work just fine click it and go. Uh, the target polygon count, uh, if you, you bring that up and you can hold down control and mouse over it, you can get a little more information about it. Just know that this target polygon uh, count is five, whatever number is here is multiplied by a thousand. So if you want um, 5,000, leave it at that. If you want 2,000, take it to two. If you want 500, type in 0.5 uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to take this thing down to around 2,000, so I'm going to put that in. And we'll leave Adaptive on, so it will try to, what, it, what Adaptive does is it looks for any sharp curvature or sudden change in the geometry, and it can know to include a little bit more uh, uh, or increase the polygon count in those areas uh, so that it can bend very easily or uh, move around a, a, a sudden change in a surface or volume very easily, or where it's broader, it can use bigger polygons to uh, achieve the surface. All right, uh, so I'm going to turn uh, Adaptive off and just run it, and let's take a look to see what we get. Also note that uh, it, um, whenever it runs, it's going to apply whatever default material and color you have set uh, over here, so I'm going to just change that to my matte cap gray. It's just a little easier to see. Um, now, you know, it, it, it didn't do too good a job of keeping things symmetrical here. This is acceptable, uh, but and you can see my point count up here is you know, about 2,000. Uh, that, that, uh, this, would, this would work just fine, but I'm going to undo that and uh, do it again. This time, I'm going to use some uh, guide curves to help uh, try to keep things uh, you know, looking a little better. Uh, I could also try turning on uh, adaptive and le leaving that down at that tune. Let's see what we get here. Takes it a little bit longer to run through those. Looks like it's doing about the same. Yeah, th and the count uh, is a little bit higher, so it's going to have a little bit better geometry down here along the curves and out along the edges. Um, but let's see, I'm going to undo that. Let's give it some guide curves to try to help with this uh, symmetry on it. So to do that, I'm going to pull up uh, B and then press Z and look down here to the Z remesher guide uh, brush. And yeah, I can just draw those out uh, on there. But that's probably a, a little bit, um, you know, it's a little wobbly. Uh, so you can hold down the, let me pull out here, you can hold down the shift key try to get uh, centered. In fact, I might want to just go to the very top here, make sure perspective is not on you. Yeah. Um, get as close to the center as I can. Might be easier to see that up here. 
and start drawing, then press shift and let it, it looks like it's going to try to go around it. You see that with the, with the red band, also looks like it's trying to wrap under it. Yeah, not really following uh, very straight. Let's try it from the other end. Getting a little bit better results there. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to leave it at that and then do the same thing across one of these sections along here. Let's try about midway. And there, let's see, will it go around it? Nope. So I'm just going to let it try to get as close to center as possible. Actually, that looks like it's going to bump in a little bit, so I don't really like that. So let's just leave it at that one. Yeah, that one looks very good. It looks like it's running down mostly on the center, so that may be all I need. Um, turn adaptive off. Leave it at uh, 2000. Run that. Yeah, now we get a little bit better results in terms of getting things uh, in the center. Not quite dead in the center uh, in this case. If I really got, if I really wanted to get picky, I could just get my move brush and go in there and move that. But I think this thing is is going to be okay. A little bit of pole uh, creation uh, down here, which might result in some weirdness when we try to, uh, if we had to uh, unwrap this thing. But yeah, this is uh, pretty optimized. Uh, let's turn that off. You can see it's got some faceting uh, in there, but again, uh, the smoothing, uh, the normal smoothing will take care of that. And you can see if I go to render, render properties and turn on smooth normals, if I did a BPR on it, see that that's all going to go away. The only area where it might run into a little bit of difficulty would be out here on these where it's faceting a little bit just due to the geometry. But most time you're going to see it from a, you know, a little bit, uh, an angle a little bit farther away. And if it is causing uh, a little bit of difficulty, uh, you can always uh, just go to the um, subdivision and subdivide it once. And you know, that'll give you uh, a little bit better results. And you see that takes care of all that. Now it's gonna run the, you know, it's gonna quadruple the count. So uh, you know, understand that because it divides every face uh, by four. Uh, so you know, under understand that. Um, but in this case, I think it's going to be just fine. Or you could turn the count up to, you could undo this and uh, turn the count up to three. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. We might get a little bit better uh, result out of that. So let me undo uh, that. Uh, Shift F so I can see it. And let's see, let's try, let's just take that to three. And, and I could also turn, I forgot to do this, I forgot to turn the strength of my curve up so that it wants to you know, really try to follow uh, that curve. And now let's run that. Yeah, and that's looking a little bit better when we go, yeah, looking, still got that little bit of a bump right in there, but looking, looking a lot better uh, out here on that end. And let's see, when we render it, uh, here, let me hide that. Yeah, see, so it's all nice and smooth uh, in there. So I'll call that one uh, good. So let's move up to the, uh, let's do the, in fact, let me go ahead and do this one next and then maybe tackle the the handle here, uh, the big part of the handle at the end, because that might, that one's always uh, a little bit problematic because of that slot. Uh, so let's go to uh, this part. Uh, let's click it again and make that visible, and then let's hide uh, the other. And um, Shift F to bring up the uh, count. Let's see, around 7,000. We can definitely uh, optimize uh, this one quite a bit. Um, well, I've got my uh, guides here, and we'll turn symmetry off. Uh, let's start a guide up at hold down Shift. Let's see if I can get it to ring it. Uh, yeah, there it goes. Um, it's just not wanting to line up very. There, okay, there we go. Good. Yep. So good um, around that way. Uh, I could try by hand outlining it uh, out here. I may just uh, see about just see if I can get one to go around uh, in that direction. That's not bad. 
You know, I don't like that though. In fact, this, this may be all we need. Or I could come in uh, by hand and pull it around this. And if I need more segments uh, on these, I can always go to stroke, uh, curve, and curve step. I can take that down. We'll take that down to 0 0.2 and should get a little bit finer uh, stroke uh, around things. Yeah, and that's looking pretty good. So we'll try to just. Uh, draw around. In fact, here's where uh, I probably could uh, use my symmetry. And let's get in here on that. Draw part of it. And then I can just pick it up. Pick it up. Through there. Mm, don't like the way that end did. It looks like that's what it's going to do. But that should be more than enough to uh, for this thing to uh, do what it needs to. If you really need to define the loops along these things, uh, you could. Uh, you know, I can drag up on those. Again, you don't really need to do too much uh, with these, but yeah, if you really need to define things uh, with these, you can. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of what's happening right there. Let me see if I can get rid of that. Um, sometimes you can draw in, you can draw into pieces. Yeah, and um, yeah, that one's still just not going. Not going to get it in there, is it? Okay, that's a little bit better. And. Sometimes let's see. No, I think that's going to select the whole thing. If you don't, if you don't want anything, always you, if you need to get rid of, you can undo it or uh, you can hold down Alt and click it, and whoop, that got the whole thing. Uh, my brush may be a little too big here. Um, yeah, hold down Alt and click that. Well, it looks like it's going to do the whole thing, so I'm just going to undo it. We'll see how this does with the uh, remesher. Yeah, let's take that down. This can go down um, pretty far, so I might just take that to 1.5. See if we can go down to 1500. We'll leave adaptive off, and let's see my curve strength, and we'll turn way up. And Z remesh it, and yeah, that looks pretty good. Very good symmetrical flow through there. Fairly even poly distribution. Got a little bit tighter in where we need it. Yeah, it's holding at 1300. That's really good. So, and if needs be, I can always come in and get rid of some of these extra loops on things. In fact, um, let's do that uh, through edge loop and uh, under delete loops. I may need to turn this angle way down. Let's try deleting some loops. Oh yeah, definitely need to take it down. Uh, let's take it down to, let's just try 10 and see what we get. And delete, yeah, and there we go. That gives us that gives quite a bit of optimization. Oop, that may still be too much. Um, yeah, way too much. Uh, let's try five. And it's only getting rid of one. I really want to get rid of some of these loops because those definitely aren't needed as as tight uh, in there. Uh, let's see. Let's try dropping. Uh, still too much. This one may be as good as it's going to get, and if I can always delete these in uh, 3D Studio if I, if I really need to. I think this one's about as about as good as it's going to get. Um, let's see. And let's see. Let's do the last one. And come up to it. Let's hide that. Turn that on. And with my uh, curve tools, and we'll turn, uh, in this case, uh, we'll turn symmetry off. And I definitely need to define this area right here because what happens if I, if I, if I don't do that, um, if I come down to uh, the Z remesher, which will leave that at five, that's probably a good count uh, for this thing. Um, if I Z remesh it, Sometimes it will, actually that's doing a pretty good job on it. Sometimes though, if you take the count way down, it will uh, eliminate 
uh, areas. Uh, and like I said, uh, I'm going to need to come back uh, and finish this one up.